The following is a demonstration of predicting potential flight delays using a publicly available airline data set on H2O. For this example, I've spun up a 16-noted H2O cluster on EC2 instances, and we will use the entire 26 years worth of flight information available on RIDA. The data set itself is about 152 million rows long and about 14.5 gigabytes uncompressed on disk. On the browser, I have pulled up a Flow notebook, which is a collection of calculable cells. Flow is H2O's web-based interface and a great way for new users to get started and learn all the available features and algorithms that H2O has to offer. In Flow, you can alternate between text cells and executable cells where the user can type or have H2O generate coffee script that can be ran programmatically and shared between different users. There are obvious benefits to predicting potential delays and logistic issues for a business. It helps the user make contingency plans and corrections to avoid uh, undesirable outcomes, of which include, for example, uh, recommendation engines can forewarn flyers of possible delays and rank flight options accordingly. Other businesses might pay more for a flight to ensure certain shipments arrive on time. And airline carriers can use information to better their flight plans. The goal is to have the machine learn and take in all the possible factors that might affect a flight and return a simple probability of how likely a flight might be canceled or delayed. To start, we're going to import the data set from S3, where the data is actually sitting right now. All you have to do to actually execute a cell is to hit Control Return. During the Parse Setup page, you get to choose the column names as well as the column types. So here, for year, I want to choose it as a numerator instead of a numeric. Uh, day of week as well gets treated as an enum or a factor. Um, so during the model build process, they will get expanded out automatically um, into the dummy variables. So going down. Flight, arrival, delay. Okay. Um, flight number as well is a route number, so it's an enum, tail number, enum. Perfect. And then you parse. So the beauty of uh, something like Flow is that you can point and click through an entire workflow. But what's generated as you're pointing and clicking through the interface is um, CoffeeScript that is automatically generated on your end. Or if you can write more programmatic scripts, you can actually write the CoffeeScript yourself um, and save the notebook and pass it on and share it between users. Okay, frame. And now we have a summary of the frame right here. In which case, we can also convert uh, column types uh, to numerics or enumerators if necessary. Uh, if you want to sort of visualize uh, individual column or explore a specific column, let's say um, origin, let's look at a tally of all the different factor levels in the column and uh, the count of each of those factor levels. Uh, so it gives you an idea of how distributed um, the features are. So in this case, it does look like in our particular data set, uh, there does look like a lot of flights. Uh, this is origin, so a lot of flights coming out of O'Hare, Chicago, or Atlanta, or uh, Dallas Love Field from um, Dallas. So once you're done exploring the data and you actually want to build a predictive model that will get put into production, um, here you can do build model and it will pull up a list of the current algorithms that we uh, have exposed to the front end. We have a whole host of algorithms that we are currently working on um, and slowly we'll add that to the list of models that you can build. Um, at the moment, we're going to build for this uh, demo, we're going to build a general linear model, a logistic regression model. So when you choose to build something like a GLM model, you just click GLM and it will populate a um, sort of a point and click uh, field. To really track the speed and scale of something like H2O, you have to uh, track the performance of the model build, uh, which you can do by going to admin and water meter, which will pull up uh, perf bars, uh, 
uh, or performance uh, performance bars. Um, and here we have 16 boxes. So 16 blue boxes, uh, each of the lines of the blue box represents a core on the machine. So 16, um, cluster, 16 nodes to the cluster and about eight cores to each of those uh, nodes. You can choose the airlines data set here um, and then point and click and say ignore all. So we're gonna ignore all the columns except year, month, day of month, day of week. You need carrier, flight number, uh, origin, destination, and distance of the flight. Um, choose binomial. Uh, and the response column is the is departure delay. It's departure delay. Um, and just run it. Um, and so what happens when I I'm gonna pull this to the side here is when I build a GLM model, what you see on the side is uh, the green is user time or computation time. And when I execute a build GLM model, it will essentially spark up all 16 machines with data sets sort of uh, with parts of the data or chunks uh, on each of those machines uh, being used to compute uh, to build a GLM model. So the process and the computation is completely distributed and parallelized. So once your model is done building, what you have in the model output include everything from ROC curves uh, for binary classification problems to um, the coefficients for um, the GLM model. And in the cases of tree-based modeled deep learning models, you can get variable importance in a similar bar chart fashion. Um, scoring down, you have the scoring history. For GLM, you have the objective value over iterations. Uh, for many of the other algorithms, it is the scoring history of um, decreasing mean square error over increasing uh, number of trees or increasing epochs of the model build. And if you specify a validation set, it will give you all those same summaries, except instead of on the uh, training set, you'll get it on the validation set. And and finally, what we have here is a plain old Java object, which is what you can take uh, by doing a simple curl command and then compiling it against the H2O gen, gen model jar file um, and put that into production into anything that can read Java code, essentially. Um, this could be taken into a storm bolt. It could be uh, read into a Spark streaming, so you can do real-time streaming predictions. Um, or it could be written into a Hive UDF project, uh, all of which are up to the user's uh, use case and environment with very low costs uh, on the part of the data scientist or the developer who will need normally to translate over an algorithm that a data scientist has um, produced and built and translate it into something that can be taken into production.